What's going on guys, Matt Schaefer back here from Mosaic Design. This one here is a Hi-Fi 2 build, so let's check it out. So the goal here was to stick to a pretty stern budget. We still got great audio equipment, but we stuck to a uh, very modest budget. So um, everything sits behind OEM panels. So if you get in the car, if you have people sit in the car, you would never have any idea that anything has been modified. So we utilize factory locations for everything. Um, our equipment, went underneath this the front storage panel here so we have our subwoofer it is a flat 10 inch focal flax subwoofer it's like a pancake woofer it's only a few inches deep and then we have our amplifiers and everything underneath this panel here so with the aesthetics of this one we kept it very simple very modest and we included a lot of the silver trim that you find in the tesla the black acrylic you know, just to kind of give it that organic Tesla type of design. So on the right side of the trunk, we have the amplifier cover. And this is a removable cover on top, and it obviously has a Tesla logo that's all built from different types of acrylic. And it says remove for fuse access. So just to kind of show you some of the detail here, we have uh, a grill material to allow air to ventilate and circulate up from the bottom. This is a finger hole, so you can pull this out. So it comes out just like that. And now we're able to be able to service or get to anything that we need to for our equipment. We have a fan right here that activates when the amplifiers are on, thus moving some of the stale air out of this little enclosure, out of the grill material here. And Again, kept this modest, so we didn't use any Class AB amplifiers. No Moscone on this one. Uh, this is the first time I used the JLVXI 8-channel uh, amplifier. Really, really good amplifier for the price point. Um, it has 8 channels of output, and then you have two pre-outs, which are going to the subwoofer here. So the, the preamp outputs of the VXI amp feed into our RD JL amplifier monoblock. And that is, again, going to amplify that Focal Flax subwoofer. So in the back of this, you have the fuses for our equipment back here. And you have the ground distribution. And then you have the input into the subwoofer enclosure. All the uh, cabling is all braided back here, heat shrinked. On the subwoofer panel, we mimicked the same grill that you see here. So it's the same design. It's just shrunk down in order to fit the scale of this panel. Same same pattern, uh, painted matte black. Obviously, we don't need the grill because the enclosure is directly underneath this acrylic here. But we did that just to kind of add a, you know, design element and have it flow in with our panel on the right side. Um, some acrylic trim around the subwoofer. And again, we have the silver accent, which goes and uh, blends in with what you see on the doors and on the dash and all that kind of stuff. So, like I said, pretty pretty simplistic, um, but it looks the part, it's functional, um, and that's something, if you guys don't know about the installs that we do, uh, functionality is always the first part when it comes with a design, right? We're not going to put things in places that are gonna hinder Tesla servicing this vehicle. So there's nothing underneath this area. You can still pull off these panels. And obviously the top still goes on over top, thus covering everything and hiding everything. And because this is a flat subwoofer, there's still a good amount of space between the floor and here. You have all this uh, volume underneath these panels, right? So there's enough air to really move around. So you're not gonna hear any panel rattle when this is down. If you've seen my last Model X build, we did a much more beefier subwoofer. Um, subwoofer was a lot closer to the floor and we had to vent it out the top. If you guys have not seen that, I'm gonna link it to the end of this video. It's the Model X we did with the Focal Utopia M equipment. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out again. I'll link it to the end of this video. So inside the vehicle now, Again, everything is just like you see it from the OEM, right? Um, in this case, we're not adding another source in conjunction with the factory. It is just the factory radio audio that's 
all he listens to. We designed this around the budget that we had for this build here. So we did do three ways, which is great. Three way active. This car did not have the UHFS system. So it was a two way from the factory where you have uh, the six in the tweeter. Uh, in this case, we added a mid. We made our own speaker adapter plates, which I'll show you here. And that mounted into that factory position up there on the dashboard. Uh, you've seen me make pillars in the past. The reason for that is we're controlling that speaker. And by controlling that speaker, I mean we're not allowing the speaker to reflect off the glass because when you tune a car uh, you cannot tune out a reflection and a reflection is glass right if you if a speaker plays into glass it's going to disperse on the glass and it's going to go all over the place thus giving us less control over that speaker so there's some things we just cannot fix but again this this case budgetary constraints we maximized what we could do so we added the three-way to give us a lot more staging and a lot more presence up front and when you have the two-way, that speaker in the door is gonna play anywhere from 60, 80, all the way up to about 4,000 Hertz, wherever your tweeter is gonna be crossed over at. So you get less mid bass out of these speakers, and at the same time, you're not having as much of that mid, uh, mid range presence up here on the dashboard because it is down low. So it makes a substantial difference when you go from a two-way to a three-way. So in this case, because of budget, we compromise. We did not do the pillars. We put them in OEM locations, but it still sounds great. Um, again, factory locations, we made some angled speaker adapters down here to angle the six-inch speaker upwards. I'll overlay some pictures here so you can see how it sits in the door. There is a foam ring that kind of breaks up from where it sits to the door panel. The tweeters are mounted right here in the OEM locations. I'll overlay some pictures here so you can see what it looks like behind this panel. And again, as far as the factory MCU, you still have all the sounds, all the autopilot chimes, the turn signal chimes, uh, the, the brake chime, all that kind of stuff. So everything does function like this, exactly like it did from the factory. It just sounds much, 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 much better. We eliminated the center channel because we don't need that. Um, but we do have that center image because we did use the JL VXI amplifier and that was kind of our entry level way to amplify and to have a digital sound processor on this car. So all our three ways run active, right? So the amplifier powers the, the front mid bass, the mid range, the tweeter, the rear speakers, um, and then it has the preamp outputs to the subwoofer. And all of that's running active. And by that, I mean each speaker's amplified. We can control the EQ, the level, the time alignment of each driver, thus giving us that center image. When you sit in your driver's seat and you know, you should expect to not, to almost be mind tricked that these speakers aren't playing, right? So when you sit here, you really don't hear, you kind of don't think this is playing because you hear that center image there. All the speakers should be working in conjunction. The subwoofer sounds like it's playing mixed up here with the you know the front mid bass so you don't your mind kind of gets tricked to how everything is playing like you are listening to something live right live you you hear the dynamics of everything right there in front of you um everything is uh you know localized to its own certain area up there on the dashboard and we were able to get that out of what we have here in the back we left those guys factory um anytime I mean, even on big builds, I always tell clients that uh, we're gonna spend the money up front, right? The back doesn't matter as much, uh, the way that we EQ the back and the way that we uh, that we time align the back. The backs really are just to add a sense of space to the vehicle, to make this space sound bigger. Much like if you're at a concert, you hear what's in front of you, what's behind you is really just reverb or an echo of what's behind you. Um, all in all, pretty simplistic guys. Um, this was a quick little build, took about four days to do. So it is a quick little turnaround. So tell me what you guys think. I might make a video explaining how the electrical system works on the Tesla. Cause I get, and I'll get comments on this video, people that don't make it this far in, and they'll say, I'll have fun losing a lot of mileage because you added a stereo system. Guys, it does not, it does not work like that. It is the biggest pet peeve of mine when people say or assume 
that you're gonna lose all sorts of mileage when it comes to listening to your audio. Um, we're adding a subwoofer. Obviously, it takes power to make power, but uh, you know what was explained to me by a Tesla engineer, and I use this analogy all the time because this is the direct analogy that was given to me. But you know, just think about this car driving 60 miles down the 60 miles an hour down the street, right? Think about how much power that is being consumed by that action of running the motors that fast down the road. Okay, now relate that to running an audio system. How in the world do you think the power equivalent is going to uh, take mileage off of the car? And the analogy that I'm getting to here that was given to me is picture 20 AGM batteries wired in parallel. Now wire in a LED off of those bank of batteries. So do you think you would be able to measure how much quicker those bank of batteries would deplete based on powering a single LED? You know, that's the power comparison. The Our system is an LED and the car's the battery, right? So it's not, it's not comparable to driving the car for a mile, 60 miles an hour down the road. Um, so just think about that analogy because it made a lot of sense when, um, when it was brought up to me because I've done a lot of different Tesla builds and you know when I did my first extreme one where I did a lot of power demanding amplifiers I wanted to understand how it works and keep in mind I've done I've done 30 to 40 Tesla systems and I've never had anyone say oh man my range has uh, been depleted because of your audio system it just again guys it just does not work like that so get that out of your brain this is the best car to do an audio system in you just have to understand uh, basically the limitations when you have to add a battery, things like that, um, just because of power demand in the back from the power wire that you would have up front on that 24 foot or so run. And like always guys, I really appreciate you guys checking out my videos. It's a lot of fun to do these jobs. You know, I get a lot of business off of YouTube videos, right? Someone sees this and calls and you know, we, we set it up and another happy customer. So again, thank you guys because you guys are the people responsible for me being able to make these videos. So if you have a project, it doesn't have to be a Tesla. I mean, I'm very versed in Teslas. You can hit me up. Here's my email right here, followed by my direct phone number. These are two great contacts. Anytime, shoot me an email, shoot me a call if you have any questions. Uh, you can also follow our three Instagram handles here. Uh, at the real Matty S. That's my personal music underscore design and then sound effects home car. That would be the two for our business here. We are located in Lewis, Delaware. We are state sales tax free spot. A lot of people wonder how do you get cars from all over the place? Well, in fact, when you save an amount of sales tax off of a bigger project, it could equal, you know, a thousand, two thousand bucks, which could take care of shipping the car directly to me. So a lot of calls from California. Your sales tax is absurd. Don't know how you guys do it. We pay zero, you pay like nine or 10%. Think about how much that is. If you have a five, 10, $20,000 audio system, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna make up a lot of money, which that can then take care of shipping the car here. And like always guys, subscribe to the channel. This is where I drop all the projects. This is where I do the video walkthroughs. Uh, most of the pictures are on my Facebook page or uh, Instagram. Also check out our Mosaic design website. It's www.musaicdesign.com. At the website, you can find the full bank of build log pictures. You can search by make, manufacturer. You can search by Hi-Fi 1, 2, 3, conversion 1 and 2 to see all the different system types, what we offer, how we can do a job for you. Um, again, guys, just, just understand each client is a different client. Each person has a different budget. Each person has a different expectation. So we tailor the system design totally around all that. Um, so we we can do something in your budget area and you'll notice that within the Hi-Fi 1, 2, 3, conversion 1, 2 to see exactly kind of where you fall. Our YouTube videos are also linked to each one of the builds. So you can click the build log and then you can also see the YouTube video associated with that particular build. So it's an easier way to navigate and see all these builds. And you can also see the build log pictures of what's behind the panels and you know some of the pictures that I've been overlaying over this video, for instance. Uh, so definitely give that a look. And until next time. <laughs>